After successfully moving from Class D to Class C, the students are put on a bus and carted off to a mixed training camp in the mountains. Instead of being paired up with classmates, they will be divided into groups, split along gender lines, but mixed class years. After a week's opportunity to practice and train, each group will perform four tests. 1. Zen, a meditation exam graded on etiquette and posture. 2. A written exam, primarily concerned with morality. 3. Speech, every group member gives a speech. Grades are based on volume, posture, content, and delivery. 4. Marathon, a relay marathon graded on placement and time. Students will receive class points and personal points. If any group falls below a certain cutoff line, their leader and one other student named by the leader will be expelled. Hirata tries calming the class down, claiming he won't let anyone get expelled. If they need help, they can come to him. A good sentiment, but implementing it might be difficult, since boys and girls will only interact during supper. The rest of the time will be spent with everyone in their individual groups, and without their cell phones. He asks Horikita to be the consultant for the girls. She admits outright that her personality might not be the best for helping others, and asks Kushida to be her second-in-command. She reluctantly accepts when Horikita points out that the class trusts her. Ayanokoji realizes he can't protect the entire class. He must pick his battles. He overhears a few, hoping to avoid Ryuen, who became a social pariah after getting his ass handed to him by Ayanokoji. The new student council president, Nagumo, challenges Manabu to a competition to see who the better president is. No stakes, just pride, and he agrees to it. After the groups are settled and everyone lugs their bags up the mountain, Ayanokoji's group bickers about their sleeping arrangement in the tiny shared room. That night at dinner, Ayanokoji notices Ichinose looking beat and asks if she's all right. Getting the girls' groups sorted out was a chore, but she'll be fine. She points out that the school seems to have deliberately orchestrated shared mealtime for discussion and strategizing. At another table, Horikita tries to reason with Kushida, but she refuses to see eye to eye or put any trust in her classmate. The following morning, everyone is woken up by loud music. Ayanokoji's group notices Koenji is missing, but just then he appears, having finished his morning workout. It's irritating because there's a point deduction if anyone is absent from morning roll call. Hashimoto, from Class A, calms everyone down and convinces them to hash it out later. They start the day by cleaning the grounds, followed by meditation practice. That night, Sakainagi is tripped by another student and ominously tells him not to worry about it. Ayanokoji strolls up. He says that he'll deal with the kid, but she insists it was nothing and lets him know that she hasn't forgotten her promise to bury him. It'll just have to wait until Class B goes down. K meets up with him later that night. He dropped a note in front of her at dinner to arrange the meeting, and he asks her to keep tabs on a few people. Ayanokoji finds a note of his own while changing and meets with Horikita, big brother Horikita that is, Manabu, who wants to cash in a favor. He wants to take down Nagumo by getting his sister on the student council, while Ayanokoji continues to pull her strings behind the scenes. To help keep an eye on the upperclassmen, student council VP Kiriyama will act as an informant. The following day, while training for the relay, Ishizaki gets annoyed with Koenji for doing his own thing when the group should be focused on unity. Yukimura, the group leader, injures himself. Hashimoto picks him up and promises to help him back. Ainokoji decides to go after Koenji and finds him having just killed a boar to bring back to the residence. He tries to get him to take the exams seriously, at least on the final day. Koenji stops when Ainokoji grabs his sleeve. He doesn't agree. Instead, he tells the deadpan schemer that he sees right through him. He'll do whatever he feels like. And the only thing he agrees to is keeping Ainokoji's secret. That night, Ainokoji notices a girl drop her charm. He seeks her out to return it. She's excited that he was the one to find it and thanks him. Apparently, he's getting noticed, at least among her circles. Even Nagamo has his eye on him after his race with Horikita. Ainokoji asks if she can help get him out of the spotlight, and she suggests knocking the president down a peg a suggestion he takes seriously. Since he found her charm, she agrees to answer any questions, so he asks about what happened with the girls while they were choosing their groups. In the group's room, 
Hashimoto initiates a conversation with Ishizaki, revealing that he never felt like he fit in. This prompts Yukimura to open up about his resentment for being placed in Class D. He thought his academic achievements would have placed him higher than that. Then Ishizaki's facade breaks down for a second. He commends Yukimura for stepping up to be the leader when no one else would. In the morning, he even helps out their injured team leader so he can rest up. Yukimura comes up with a strategy for the relay race. Since everyone in the group has to run a minimum distance, the weakest runners will only run that absolute minimum, and their best runners will make up the rest, picking up the slack. That evening, K slips Ainokoji a note. Heading outside, he runs into Akane, the student council secretary, crying. He asks if she's worried about the race tomorrow. She admits that she's more worried about Horikita, the brother, shouldering the burden of their class. He tells her not to worry about it and focus on her own group, which just seems to upset her more, and she walks away. Ainakoji notices Hashimoto and Ryuen on a bridge. Then Manabu and his goon show up. They're up to something, but he can't make out what they're saying. The exam day arrives, and the first three portions go well. Everything comes down to the marathon. Yukimoto waits anxiously, worried about his ankle. Ishizaki appears. Their group is farther along than he thought they would be. Ainokoji receives the ribbon just as the team leader is about to lose consciousness. He reassures Yukimoto and sets off to do his part. He has no problem making up for lost time, and even Koenji is a team player today. The results are in. All of the boys' teams passed, avoiding any expulsions. A wave of relief washes over them. And it turns out that the highest scoring group was Manabu's, winning the bet against Nagumo. Unfortunately, one of the girls' teams didn't meet the point threshold. The leader, Ikari, faces expulsion. However, she still has to pick one group member to go down with her, Akane. Horikita is taken off guard. He was played from the start. Nagumo wasn't looking to win the bet. He was plotting to meddle with the initial selection and purposely fail the student council secretary to get underneath his skin. But Horikita isn't going down without a fight. He petitions to save his right hand by using his personal points. Kei expresses her annoyance at Nagumo's underhanded tactics to Ainokoji. The deadpan automaton explains that since Nagumo has the whole B-class under his thumb, they'll pull their points together and save Ikari so he can save face. Now that they know how far Nagumo is willing to go, they need to tread lightly. Kei wonders what would happen if she were facing expulsion. Ayanakoji assures her that he would never let that happen. At the school, Sake Anagi meets with Nagumo in the student council office. She declares that she's going to take down Ichinose. In class C, the students are buzzing about Kei and Hirata's breakup. Suzune suspects Ayanakoji already knew, but he denies the accusation. The class's attention turns to Sake Anagi, who suddenly appeared in the doorway asking to speak with Haruki. This shocks everyone and he's more than happy to oblige. But before he leaves the classroom, Suzune stops him, warning him that it's obviously a trap, which comes off more as an insult than she'd hoped. Though he says he won't give away any trade secrets, the class doesn't share his confidence. During their study group, Ainokoji, Haruka, Sakura, and Yukimura all gossip about the events that transpired. A message pops up on Ainokoji's phone from an unknown number. It turns out to be Mei Yu, when he goes to meet her, she tells him to call her Mi-chan, despite his unwillingness. She wants info on the fresh-on-the-market Hirata, noting that he relies on Ainokoji the most. He tells her that, being the upstanding guy he is, Hirata most likely won't be interested in starting another relationship so soon. Mei-yu is surprised at how easy he is to talk to. Since he's a little antisocial, she thought Ainokoji was a bit intimidating but she feels like he truly listened to every word she said. Hiyori notices the two and asks if they're on a date. Mei Yu is quick to deny it, so she decides to join them. Ainokoji tells her he's planning a trip to China, so she infers he's talking to the only exchange student about it. Mei Yu asks if they're friends. Yeah, they read books together. That night, Suzune asks to meet with Ainokoji to discuss some rumors she heard about Ichinose. They're nothing but slander, but they're spreading quickly among the first years. She says Class A might have seated them, and his mind goes right to Sakeanagi or Katsuragi. 
Intervention at this point might backfire. They should sit back and wait to see what happens. Suzune ignores Ayanokoji's suggestion and invites Ichinose over anyway, making him tag along. She also thinks it's Sakayanagi, since she declared war on her recently. Ichinose tells them to stay out of it, thanks them for their concern, and leaves. It only proves Ayanokoji's point, but Suzune thinks it's cold of him to sit back and watch Class A and B duke it out. Not that that would be out of character for him. If they take each other out, they can swoop in and take advantage of the situation. When he goes to leave, Ichinose is waiting in the hall and wants to talk. She apologizes for making them worry about her and hurries away. When Ayanokoji returns to his room, he receives a mysterious call. After demanding to know who's on the line, they simply say his name and hang up. Looks like they're making their move. The following morning, he arrives at the school, where he's informed about a note everyone received claiming that Ichinose is a verifiable criminal, meaning the school will get involved. Ichinose continues to downplay the situation, telling everyone not to worry. Masumi, a student from Class A, asks Ayanokoji to talk, and they head back to his room. She claims that Sakeinagi really does have dirt on Ichinose, and offers to spill the beans to gain his trust. Oh, and no one knows that she's there with him right now. Ayanokoji has no reason to take her word at face value, and he doesn't, but he does let her go on. After the entrance ceremony, Sakainagi caught Masumi shoplifting. Instead of turning her in, she turned her into a friend to do her bidding. Ichinose has a similar story. That's why she wants Ayanokoji's help. She doesn't have anyone else to turn to, and he's Sakainagi's biggest threat. He doesn't believe her, so to try to prove herself, she repeats the shoplift for him. As soon as she leaves, he gets a call from Big Brother Horikita, who informs him that Kushida has contacted Nagumo. The next day, Kei calls Ayanokoji. He doesn't pick up, but he follows up with a text message. He wants to meet later on. She's ticked off that he doesn't seem to know what day it is, and tells him they need to meet ASAP. Ken ambushes him when he gets to class and wants to know if Suzune gave him any chocolates. It's Valentine's Day. Ayanokoji isn't expecting anything from anyone, so he need not worry. In fact, nobody's received any yet. That is, except for Hirita. Ayanokoji asks how Suzune's friendship with Kushida is going. Apparently, she agreed to meet at the mall after school, which is highly unlike her, a positive development. Ken approaches her and asks if she would study with him today. She responds with a flat no, which crushes him for a moment, but then suggests they start at a later date. Hashimoto spies on Ayanokoji after class, remembering the conversation he heard on the bridge during the last test period. It was a meeting between Manabu and Nagumo, the latter asking him to sit out the exam. When Manabu refused, Nagumo taunted him about his favorite, Ayanokoji, not being able to predict his next move. Hashimoto continues to follow him around while he meets with Kei. She's not happy about the location, but he doesn't want to cause a stir seeing as she just dumped Hirita. But sneaking around might be even more suspicious. She asks if there's any special reason that he wanted to meet today. No, it could have been any day. He just wants to know if she recognizes the unknown number from the other day. No, nobody in her contact list, but she's eager to investigate for him. She asks if that's all he wanted. Well, no. He also wants to know about how she's feeling about finals, not the direction she wanted the conversation to go. She tries to salvage something for herself and asks if he'll tutor her. She can't join his study group. They'll have to do one-on-one -on -one sessions late at night. He turns to leave, and she stops him and asks directly if he knows what day it is, handing him some chocolates before he can even finish the sentence. She tries to play it off like she got him for Hirita, but since they broke up, she might as well give them to him instead. Learning that she's the only one to give him any today gives her some hope. Hashimoto initially thinks it's just romance stuff, since he can't hear them from his hiding spot, but he can't help but think that there's more to it and catches up to them. Kei tries to use this same explanation, that she's just pawning off the chocolate to some random guy. He's not buying it though, so Ayanokoji says she should just tell him the truth, that he's just a go-between for the guy she really likes. He's still suspicious, so he tries to put the moves on her to see how Ayanokoji reacts. 
he doesn't. He turns to leave, and so does she. Hashimoto stops him and gets his contact info. By the end of the day, and to his surprise, Ayana Koji actually got chocolates from five different girls. He heads to Ichinose's place with some food. She's been homesick. Initially, she tries to turn him away, but he persists and she invites him in. He delivers the food he prepared and checks in with her to make sure she hadn't been skipping school because of those rumors. She thanks him for his concern and he heads out. The next day, Class C is in an uproar about new rumors that were posted to the message board that morning. Ayana Koji is into K. Hondo is only into curvy women. Satsuki was a call girl in middle school, and Sato hates Onodera. Haruki starts to stir the pot, and everyone gets a bit heated, throwing accusations at each other. Looks like whoever it was succeeded in disturbing the peace in Class C. Tempers flare, and things come to a head when Sakeanagi and her goons go to confront Class B. Ichinose is back in school, in time for exams, as expected, and Sakeanagi tries to sow discord, saying that she has evidence that the rumor about their class leader and piggy bank's criminality is true. Ichinose decides to face the situation head on. It's true. She's a criminal. She shoplifted. Once. She tells the class about how her single mother raised her and her sister. They weren't dirt poor, but they weren't well off either. One year, her sister was dead set on getting the iconic hair clip her favorite idol wears. She never asked for anything, so her mother worked extra hard to save up for the gift. Until one day, she collapsed. Seeing her mother in the hospital drove Ichinose to take things into her own hands. She was going to buy the gift herself. There was only one problem. She was in middle school and couldn't actually get a job. She managed to scrape some money together, and she thought she had enough to pay for it. That is, until she went to the store and faced the reality that it still wasn't enough. Not wanting to disappoint her little sister, she made the biggest mistake of her entire life, so far, awarding herself the good old five-finger discount. When her mother recovered, she knew right away that a child couldn't afford literally anything. She made her daughter humiliate herself by returning the stolen loot and apologizing. It was pure anguish. They were gracious enough not to press charges, but that somehow made it worse. Her guilt, that had already been growing unbearable, compounded by the shame she brought on her mother, drove her to a state of hikikomori. She spent months in her room, but it felt like years, the guilt and shame eating away at her. Until one day, her mother sort of, kind of forgave her a little bit and encouraged her to move forward. That's when she enrolled in the school. After sharing the harrowing tale, the class is shocked, but ultimately, they decide to not judge her for a single event in her past, but to continue to place their trust in the person they know her to be today. They even admire her transparency. Sakayanagi is as smug as ever, even in the sight of this reinforced unity of Class B, until the student council president and staff member enter the equation. If anyone else spreads more rumors, they will be punished. Afterwards, she talks with Ayana Koji, convinced that he had a hand in how this played out. She's right. He simply went over to Ichinose's place and compelled her to confess the reality of her past to him. She wasn't very graceful about it, but it was wise to get this emotional response out of her system before ultimately having to face the class. He was also sure that she had sent Masumi to his place that day she confided in him and he confirmed his intuition by checking the expiration date on the beer she stole, concluding it was the same one that Sakayanagi had caught her with in the first place. Next, he went to Manabu's spy, telling him to post the rumors that would lead to Ichinose's confession and the student council's involvement. He got the info from Kushida, who he now pays as an informant, while he develops a little side plot to get her expelled. So yeah, he had a hand in all this. The next day, Ichinose thanks Ayana Koji for his support, and he tells her she can come to him if she ever needs to talk. She reaches into her bag and gives him some chocolates. She knows it's a bit late, but he accepts them, warmly even, as warmly as Ayana Koji can do anything anyway. But it's tough to tell whether anything he does is a manipulation or not. After the final exams are marked, it turns out that everybody in Class C passed, so nobody gets expelled which, for some twisted reason, is unacceptable. 
and why the school decides to hold another special exam in four days, a class vote. They will each vote for three students they deem exceptional and at the top of the class, as well as three votes for those at the bottom. Whoever ends up on top with the most positive votes will receive an unprecedented reward, a protection point, which can be used as protection from an expulsion. The protection point can't be transferred, only the one who wins it can put it to use. The bottom of the ranking will probably be expelled. 20 million private points is the price to negate it. Any resulting expulsion won't affect the class as a whole, which is a change from the school's norm. Everyone must participate. And if there's a tie, they'll continue to cast votes until someone is at the bottom. They'll even have to give a positive vote to someone in another class to avoid vote manipulation. And they cannot vote for the same student more than once. Koenji speaks up when people start arguing. It's the perfect chance to weed out the weakest link without repercussions. Later, during their study group, Aina Koji and company decide it's best to vote for each other, so they have a chance to stay together. A good plan, but it won't stop Ayanokoji from scheming regardless. Suzune and Ayanokoji approach Ryuen to discuss whether he's got a strategy to save himself. He doesn't show his hand, but he does get under Suzune's skin, criticizing her inability to face her own brother. Ayanokoji isn't sure if he wants Ryuen gone just yet. Kei calls Ayanokoji, wondering if he's got a plan. She's had a few people thinking of grouping up with her, but it seems inevitable that she'll get a few negative votes. Aina Koji points out that her breakup with Hirita might actually play in her favor regarding the votes of girls interested in him. If she was still with him, she might have found herself under attack. He assures her that he won't vote against her. She's too important. If she starts to notice a pattern in how people are talking about using their negative votes, she shouldn't hesitate to let him know. The following morning, Ichinose ambushes him on the way to class to talk about the exam, the vote, She's clearly thinking about sacrificing herself, but Aina Koji doesn't think it's the right move. Without provocation, she offers to give him her vote for Class C. She doesn't want to see him expelled. Someone calls out from behind. It's Sakayanagi and Masumi. Ichinose hurries off. He stays behind. She thinks the test is absurd. Now that her father is no longer the chairman, it isn't his doing. Sakayanagi posits that the test was crafted to expel one specific student, him. Ayanokoji wonders if it's his work. She proposes a ceasefire until after the exam, to which he agrees. Besides, she already knows who she wants gone. The second it was announced, Kohei Katsuragi. Apparently, Ichinose went to Nagumo regarding some private point matter they had discussed. The only condition, she must agree to date him. If she wants to save everyone in her class, she might not have a choice. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.